Okay, so let me show you a diagram with just a stochastic oscillator. Now, as I mentioned before, with all these indicators, I try to use default values that come on the software. And the reason for that is I could spend hours, and I have done indeed, spend hours tweaking around with the indicators and with the figures. And all that I find is that they'll move, up, they'll work on some securities, but not on others. So I figured, well, actually, instead of just tweaking and twaddling and all the rest of it, why don't I just get on with it? Uh, and trade on the basis that any of these indicators will only give me a valid signal on some securities. And as I scroll through the 100 odd securities in the FTSE 100, the indicators on most of them will just not give me a reading which I could interpret with sufficient confidence. But out of 100 that I screen, five will be worth greater examination in more detail. And those I'll put to one side. Then I'll return to them and go through them in more detail and narrow it down to maybe one or two a week, which are trades worth placing, lasting about a week to a month in duration. So that's how I sift through and go through from having 100 stocks, spending five minutes running through them, narrowing it down to five from a visual eyeball perspective. Can I interpret this chart? as being one worthy of greater examination if the answer is no and 90% of the time it is no or 95% of the time it's no then I just ignore that chart and if it's one which I think is oh yes this looks interesting then I will put it into the different folder and as I said only about 5% make the grade and then out of that only one or two uh, are ones on which money is actually placed why is that the case well think about it I want to pick the best 1% to 2% of stock opportunities. Why would I want to lower my sights any more than that? I'm not forced to place trades, so why should I? Now, if we're looking at the stochastic oscillator, this is what it looks like. You've got the price bar chart here, the FTSE 100, and of course each bar representing a day, so it's the daily one. Then you've got the stochastic. Now remember the rules of interpretation that I mentioned textbook rules, which are not the ones we're going to be using, that we might use them a little bit, uh, and I'll show you examples of how we use them when we use them, and also on the monthly updates you'll see them. You've got overbought up here, anything in this territory around here, oversold down here, yeah, anything which goes below the line over there. So that's overbought, oversold. The crossover is when the percent K crosses the percent D. So that's crossover. And that's supposed to be a bearish signal. And as you can see, it's not been very good as an indicator. Over here, yep, you can see how we get a bit of a move. And you get something and then not much. That's why we're going to have to look at this in uh, greater detail. Here you can see how sometimes it does give you a bit of a signal for a few days and at other times absolutely useless. That's supposed to be overbought. You're supposed to have crossed, had a crossover. All you get is the share price moving higher and higher. So very often completely useless. So how are we going to use it? Well, I'm going to go through the cons and the pros of the stochastic oscillator as a momentum indicator how we incorporate it with others and how professional traders will use it in the forthcoming chapters because we've seen a lot of weaknesses here in this indicator yet we're talking about it yet it's used by banks i'll explain why in a sec 